It was a good answer. It was such a good answer that Jesus began to feel his resolve crumbling, his determination to get some rest. He looked out over the water one last time, let out a sigh, and then turned to this woman, looked her in the eye, and said, for saying this, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. It's a wonderful thing. But it is not really Jesus' best moment, is it? For him to deal with this woman in the way he does is embarrassing to those of us who worship him. He doesn't behave here like the divine son of God. He behaves like an ordinary human being like any one of us who might be grumpy and tired and unwilling to help. And the next episode in this passage isn't much better. Mark tells us that Jesus returned from the region of Tyre, but he did it by going up through the region of Sidon, eventually going around to the other side of the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis, almost as if he wanted to avoid bumping into anyone who might recognize him. But even there on the other side of the sea, someone figures out who he is and brings to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment. To his credit, Jesus doesn't dismiss this man. He heals him. But look at the way he labors to do it. He takes him aside, away from the crowd. He puts his fingers in the man's ears. He spits and touches the man's tongue. He looks up to heaven and sighs. And then he says in Aramaic, Ephatha, a word that means be opened. And Mark says immediately, the man was healed. But it doesn't come easily. I Picture Jesus soaked with sweat at the end of this story, trembling with the effort. Why doesn't he just wave his hand over the man? Isn't he the divine son of God? Can't he do that? In both of these stories, we see a side of Jesus that is a little too human for our comfort. We want him to be, I don't know, a little more godlike than he is. But why is that? What is it about the humanity of Jesus that makes us uncomfortable? If you look back through the history of the church, you will find that the question of Jesus' humanity was one of those questions that was debated for centuries. In the early days, some people believed that Jesus was just a man until he was inhabited by the spirit of Christ at his baptism. They believed that that spirit stayed with him until just before he died on the cross. And then they argued it wasn't Christ, but just this man, Jesus, who died. Another controversy raged about whether Jesus was created by God or coexisted with God from the very beginning. And if he was created, was he created of the same divine substance as God or some other more earthy substance? And then there were those who said he had a human nature and a divine nature, but only one will. And some who said, well, he had two wills and two natures. And others who said, no, he only had one nature and one will. Do you see what I mean? All this arguing about the divinity and the humanity of Jesus went on for the better part of a thousand years until the church finally reached consensus. And this was the consensus they reached, that Jesus was fully divine, and fully human, not 50-50, not 60-40, but 100-100. And so when he seems to be having a particularly human day in the Gospels, it concerns us. Where is that full divinity we've come to expect? I've tried to think about why it concerns us, and I think it's because we are human. We know what that is like, and we don't want Jesus to be like that. We want him to be better than we are, stronger, more able. Part of the problem stems from the way we think of ourselves. We walk around with this ideal self in our heads, a mental picture of the person we want to be. That self never makes mistakes, 
never gets spaghetti sauce on its necktie, never has a hair out of place. That self is nearly perfect. But then there is this other self, the one we keep looking at in the mirror, who is not perfect. And it can be disheartening to discover just how much distance there is between the ideal self and the real self. We keep reaching up toward that ideal. We keep falling flat on our faces. And so it is with our conception of Jesus. We have in our minds a kind of ideal Jesus who is probably much more divine than human. This Jesus is always compassionate, always generous, always able. This Jesus does all things well. And so when we hear stories about this other Jesus, the one who refers to Gentiles and their little daughters as dogs, the one who heals people like some wild-eyed witch doctor, it disturbs us. The real threatens the ideal. But psychologist Carl Rogers said one of the keys to our own mental health was achieving congruence between the real and the ideal self, coming to that place where we could be at peace with who we are, knowing that, yes, sometimes we do spill spaghetti sauce on our ties, but it's okay. It's just part of being human. Everybody makes mistakes. Maybe one of the keys to our spiritual health is allowing Jesus to be both fully human and fully divine.